simple answer. Well, this will be a different kind of uh, video that I do from Facebook. We're here at the, uh, let me sit here. <laughs> We're here at the uh, Blab headquarters. And who are you? Uh, I am Sean Puri. I'm the founder of Blab. Yeah. You guys may have heard of. Um, which is this uh, video service, right? It is, yeah. So. Do you want to describe what we're seeing here? So we, you can. We have, <laughs> so on air right now, you're going to have three or four people. So people having a conversation. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of people who live stream get a little bit nervous because they go on air, they don't know what to say, and 15 seconds go by, and they ask the crowd, you know, do you have any questions? And then the main question is like, who the hell are you? <laughs> Most people don't have uh, have that much to do on their own. So our our platform is a little bit different. Uh, you get on and you have a conversation about the thing that you love. So in this case, they're talking about, I don't know what this is, but it's called the Running Summit. So I'm guessing that they're really into running and there's 67 people live in the room watching and you'll see them chatting all here on the side. And 178 watching on my thing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, people asking questions or being able to call in. So it has a little bit of the old radio show format where you got the host who are talking, but at any time somebody can jump in and add to the conversation, which I think is you know, kind of how you first discovered Blab. You, somebody was hosting and you come to, you came in as a guest talking about Yeah, well, Joel, like, Joel Kahn or Zane or somebody like that was always pushing it last year. You, you know, there was a, a real interesting group of media companies that were born was born last year, you know, Periscope, Meerkat U, BitBlab.im. Yeah. Um, why, why did so, three companies pop out of nowhere? Uh, last I think year. what was the big deal about last year? I, this, so this is not uncommon, as you know, right? When you look at one Bitcoin company, there's actually if you've heard of one, it's called the Rule of One Three Nine, right? If you've heard of one, there's probably three others that you actually know of that are not, you, you know you just haven't even seen yet. And then if you if you know three, that there's definitely nine going on right now. And it's the same thing where when these devices got powerful enough, where you've got high speed connectivity, you've got an HD camera at all times in your pocket you were bound to see some interesting live products uh, pop up. So the sort of the time was now because technology made this possible where, you know, there's many people who've tried to do this since the early 2000s, honestly, but um, they've ended up getting acquired because they couldn't quite get to mainstream because not everybody had one of these in their pockets at that time. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas asked, can you explain what we're looking at? <laughs> we're looking at Blab.im. We're at the headquarters of it, and we might get a tour of the, of the offices here. It's a little startup here in San Francisco, and they let you do group video chats. Yeah, yeah. many to many broadcasts. So I'll give this you this. is like the modern See You, See Me. If anybody, yeah. did, you, did you ever play I, See You, I've, See I've heard of it since this. A lot, of people, <laughs> a lot of people bring it up. I didn't originally use that, but I'll give you the example that, that's been interesting lately, which is, uh, do you know who a guy named Martin Shkreli is? I've heard, uh, yeah, the, the so, asshole on the internet. Exactly. Yeah. So if you Google the most hated, man, <laughs> most hated man on the internet, you'll see Martin Shkreli's yeah. photo pop up, which is pretty pretty infamous Google search. So he jumped on Blab uh, and he wanted to stream. And if you look at anything in the media, you watch him on CNN, everywhere, this guy's made out to be an absolute monster. Uh, and he basically just said, well, he could take it into his own hands. So he gets on here and he's just in his house and this guy's you know 32 year old CEO you know 100 million dollars in the bank he just bought the Wu-Tang album for 2 million dollars uh, and he has the only Frankie, copy hold on about it investors we're going to talk about that in a second he, he has the only copy of it so he gets on and he lets anybody come in he says I'm the most hated man in, on the internet fine internet come hate on me and he'll invite anyone to come in and, and ask him questions just tell him to f off whatever it may be he will talk to anyone and everyone and so he streamed uh, a situation where he was at a congressional hearing and he pled the fifth and basically his fans were watching the hearing live on Blab. Yeah. And then he left the, he pled the fifth and he left and he hopped on the train and he jumped on Blab and he was there doing commentary side by side with the hearing about what's actually going on, about where the senator is taking in, in this direction. He couldn't say it in the hearing but he was comfortable saying on the public internet. And that was kind of a crazy moment. Somebody right? asked, is he an investor? I, he's not, Michael Birch is an No, investor. no, we only have, we have one, one investor, and it's a couple, Michael and Zochi Birch. Um, and so they, they're the ones who have bankrolled this idea. They started the Bebo, so, and they made $800 million by selling uh, Bebo. That's right. Uh, they started in the UK with that, and uh, have done very well. And they're now funding. Uh, yeah, so we, we actually bought Bebo back. So Michael sold it for $850 million. And he came to me about a year and a half ago, and he's like, you know, we might be able to buy Bebo back. It's become a shell of itself, but could we do something with it? So we bought it back for one million about a year and a half ago. That sounds like a good ROI. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Reverse Sell ROI. high, buy low. Right? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and uh, we bought it back, and we, we reinvented it as something else. We launched it, and we had half a million downloads in two months. And so to the surface, everybody thought things were going great. But as you know, as a founder, you're the first one to know when things aren't quite right. 
And uh, so we had a moment two months in, I said, look, the numbers are good on the surface and we could keep doing this for a year, but we know this is not a winner. And we all came here to build a bit winner. Like I came here to build a YouTube, a Twitter. I want to build one of them. Like that's what I'm going for. Everything else is a loss. And uh, so we had a moment where we, we had and you know, within six months, maybe even less, whether you have something that's gr doubling every few days, right? Yeah. ICQ came out in 1996, uh, November 1st, and it, it went to 40 people the first day. And uh, six weeks later, it had 65,000 users. Yeah. So you knew it was a winner pretty quickly. Right? E even the first Bebo in nine days, it had a million members. And this was back when a million members was a really big deal. Yeah. Of course, nine days later, none of them were using it anymore. The retention was terrible. And so Michael, for six months, fixed Bebo, so it was sticky. But yeah, you can tell very early on with these products whether you have two things, either viral growth, and it's just doubling every X number of days, or you have a small amount of people who passionately are obsessed with you. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing. A few people who really, really love you, and that means you're onto something. And in that case, we had a lot of people who kind of liked this. So we knew it was time to switch. And Blab was, Blab was the answer. Blab was what we came out of it with. So, you know, there's been lots of these. I mean, See You See Me was the first example, right? Uh, lately, Google Hangouts, I guess, would be the example. What makes this different than Google Hangouts? Why, why do you think you have a right to exist in this market where there's billion dollar <laughs> companies <laughs> who have more fiber than God who <laughs> can yeah. do this technically better, but you know? I think, I think you, you will see that uh, focus beats resources every day of the week, and that's what's happened. We've taken every big Google Hangouts show that they had, and it's on Blab now. Uh, people have moved their paid, sponsored stuff that was on Google Hangouts to Blab within a week yeah. because it just works. It works better. The devil's in the details, right? So, like, yeah, for example, it's easy to start. I, a Google Plus Hangout is a pain in the ass right. to start. Try to get someone to join. They got to log in with a certain thing, get an invite code, and find a way in. Yeah. Get their mic to work. Get their audio to work. And then even further than that is you never get any discovery. So most of us, like you, right? You want to create content and get the word out there. You want to become more known over time. A Google Hangout is a private thing. In Hangouts on Air, they never built discovery. Yeah. So the reason these work is because these guys can come on and talk about running, and maybe there's 40 people who care, but then those viewers start sharing. Like if I click this little button right here, this yellow button that says share the last 30 seconds, yeah. it's gonna share a little video clip of the last 30 seconds as a highlight out to Facebook and Twitter. And it's these little details that bring in new viewers that actually grow the where user is, base. Where does that uh, innate uh, sensibility, social sensibility come from? Uh, where did the, because... The ideas for these? Yeah, not, <laughs> well, not everybody uh, understands how to, how to make something really beautifully social the way yeah. you have. You know. well, it's a fundamental belief, that, like, so Google is one of the best engineering organizations in the world, but the new social products are not about engineering. It's not a technical feat. To build Snapchat, that's not the, It wasn't that hard to do. Facebook cloned it in ten days, right? It's because they understand psychology more than technology. Yeah. And so, if you understand the psychology of, hey, these people are on air, they want to, you know, they're putting themselves out there. They're getting on video. They want to feel the audience live, right? If they're doing it live, you got to show who's in the room. That's why we show the faces. You got to have the chat room pulsing, right? Even just a little feature like this, it's we let you know when it's someone's first day on Blab, and with one click, I can welcome them to the broadcast, and it's going to say, welcome to that person. Now, that little social dynamic is a big reason why that person in their first day will stay on Blab because they felt welcomed by all these people. We just made it easy to do it, right? We made it feel natural. And so we care about it. We think about the psychology all the time about why do people do what they do, and it's what we do best. Right? I, I think this might is not really important. I mean, right now I'm watching a lot of comments coming in. You know, uh, what are from people, saying? people all over the world. Oh, they're saying uh, how many corporate organizations are using Blab? Like Peter Dawson says. Uh, uh, so to answer that, yeah, how yeah. many uh, how many corporations are using this? Do you... A lot more than I expected. So we're still in beta. Uh, we are we're a very new product that's growing. But I thought the companies come later. But we've, we have IBM, Adobe, Cisco, SAP. Like some of the people that you think are big and slow, they've actually been the first ones to adopt this, right? Cisco says. Cisco Careers gets on, they invite a whole slew of college students to attend, and they bring in people from, who work at Cisco to say what it's like to actually work there. Let them answer questions from those students, like a virtual career fair, you know, in 30 minutes, instead of having to fly to each campus to meet a handful of students each time. So these companies have been pretty clever. I mean, ESPN uses this every week to broadcast, you know, uh, NBA hoops roundtables. They just talk hoops, and as an NBA fan, that's pretty awesome to actually be able to talk to that talent 
uh, instead of just seeing one minute highlight reels on SportsCenter. Car Carl's asking, are you worried about, I'm using Facebook Live right now, are you worried about Facebook Live? I don't think so because it's very different. Very different product, right? Like to do what you're doing right now, Facebook yeah. Live or Periscope, they're phenomenal tools to do that. Point a camera, broadcast a video. But to have a conversation, to host a conversation, we're a communications tool really. Yeah. Um, to do that, it, it just requires a whole set of features. If Facebook tried to do this, they ruin what they have. If, same thing with Periscope. If they tried to do this, it would be very problematic for them. Yeah. Um, you really got to, I mean, with these startups, you know how it is, you got to have focus and know who you are, what's your identity. You know, we don't try to be something we're not. We try to be what we are. You know, yeah. if you're going to go to a, to a you know, DJ Tiesto concert, don't use Black. It won't be any good. There's not a conversation. <laughs> you're just showing people an amazing concert. Yeah, um, we're not for showing. We're for talking. We're for we're for conversations. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm playing with all these. They're they're really interesting new ways to reach audiences and to have new kinds of communities that interact with you. It's a lot of fun. I mean, you can see how fun the, the, uh, people are. You, you know, that that you can just start up a little conversation with your friends, sort of like we do on uh, Gilmore Gang. You know, but Gilmore Gang has a TriCaster and $20,000 yeah. worth of equipment. You don't need that yeah. anymore. Leo Laporte, when he featured us as like his pick of the day or whatever on, on Twit, he, he was on air and, and he discovered it and he goes, man, for what we pay a million dollars a year for, you just made available for free for everybody. And he's like, it's not the same thing, but it's almost there and it yeah. didn't cost you a million bucks. Yeah. And so that, that's the idea, right? You want to democratize these things where you don't need to be tech savvy. You don't need thousands of dollars worth of equipment in order to broadcast. Yeah. Antonio says uh, we can't use Blab in our projects because it doesn't allow captions. It's not compliant with the Disability Act. Are you thinking about that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a real problem with live video. I mean, people ask me, you know, on Facebook, hey, can you do captions on Facebook Live? No, I can't. I'm right. doing live video yeah. and I don't have the infrastructure to, one, to get a third party involved and caption my stuff. Right, know? I mean, these are, there's and, some, and there's no Facebook algorithm that'll listen to my voice and right. you know, turn on a caption of some kind. It's very difficult, right? That's, that's a technology problem, but you get there when, you know, as you grow, as you develop. I mean, I remember when YouTube first started doing captions, crowdsourcing that project, that was many years into YouTube. That was not, you know, for us, first eight months. It's, it's not a problem you try to solve today. Uh, today, you solve the problem of like, uh, nobody knows you exist. How the hell do you get your name out there? That's our problem today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, future problems. Uh, Peter's asking, uh, how are the private sessions of Lab, um, and do do you offer private sessions? So right now there is no private. We've yeah. done all public so far, which is why we're growing rapidly, right? Because each broadcast is our best sales pitch. Somebody comes in, they discover it, they say, hey, this yeah. is really cool, and then they they stick. Uh, private doesn't spread in that same way. Um, so we've, we've focused on public for now, but in, in, the, in the end, there will be a private version of Blab as well. Yeah. Frank, Frankie's uh, worried about uh, brand destruction issues, <laughs> naked people, racism, porn, stuff like that, right? And that always happens when I was uh, running that meeting yeah. and see you see me, there'd be people showing up doing weird shit that you didn't want yeah. in your community. But, there's a couple ways to, to fend that off. I mean, yeah. the first thing is that brands are already using it. So. Uh, even though some would be worried, I mean, you've got brands that have a lot to lose that are using it. UFC making fight announcements on here, bringing the heavyweight champion of the world, letting them do fan Q and A's, right? So there's there's big companies that have found ways to, to leverage this. Now the the trick is that when you call in, it's not chat roulette. You don't just join the square right away. You see the person's profile photo, their Twitter bio. You see how many days that they've been on Blab for. So you get a sense of is this person legitimate or not, and you can pick and choose as a host who gets in and who doesn't. Yeah. In this case, right now they're answering questions from the crowd because most people like to type their questions and not uh, not uh, not you know, call in every single time just to ask it. Yeah, yeah. You might not even be dressed appropriately right. to be calling in. You know, you just want to type a question and, and so if watch. So if your audience has seen the product on AMAs, we power all their live live chats that are video because our tool can actually be embedded. So you can embed Blab on any website on the internet and uh, just host it right there. Your, your visitors don't even need to know that Blab exists. They just need to know that you know, on your website, you're doing a town hall, you're doing a Q and A, you're doing a round table, you're doing something to interact with the audience. Yeah, I like this, you know, for the next week, I'm gonna be exclusively on Snapchat uh, when I go to South Africa just to play with that. But I, I, I just, uh, Snapchat's not, not interactive this way with a community, and I 
feel that I'm going to use this a lot more over the next year than I, I have. Have you been thinking about building different kinds of communities, like communities aimed at video gaming, for instance, sort of like uh, Sw uh, Switch does, right? Or, uh, Twitch. Uh, Twitch, I mean. <laughs> Switch is a good name for a product. I like that. <laughs> uh, we, so we didn't force this. In fact, at the, at the start, we tried to just be tech. And then very quickly, uh, we were actually built on Slack. We were a Slack plugin, basically. That Which makes use. sense because it's right down the street. Yeah, exactly. There, there are buddies over there. So we started there. <laughs> we, thought, block away. We, we thought all the content was tech. And day one, I was the one. I was doing five shows about tech a day, right? That's how you get started with things. But really quickly, people started using it for everything else. They started using it to just hang out. They started using it for music discussions. Started using it for politics. You know, the debate's going on. Let's basically have our own little war room here where we're giving our opinion on what's going on. You know, we don't need to listen to Fox News. We can have our own stage. Yeah. So people started using it for so many things, we decided let's let it be open, let's discover what's going on, and then wherever a natural community starts to bubble up, let's just do our job of like, um, introducing them to each other and actually you know, forming some of those bonds that, that should exist there. Yeah. And so we we just look and see, hey, a lot of people are talking about science, well maybe you guys should know each other, and maybe there's some things that we could do to kind of bring that community together. So it works a little bit like Reddit in that way where different little sub-communities pop up, but we don't say, we are only for video games or we are only for tech discussions or anything like that. We, you know, we're a tool, we're a pen in people's hand. R Rami asks, uh, is there a plan to have email capturing and autoresponder integration anytime soon? It, and I think where, it, where that's really going is monetization and marketing, right? How, how do I capture yeah. my audience? How do I keep in touch with them in other ways maybe? And then, uh, you know, how can I throw an ad in front of them or something like that? So, so right now, Michael Hyatt, who is a, an author and I believe a marketer in some, some way, so he's a New York Times bestseller, yeah. and he's doing his course called Platform University on Blab right now. These are all paying members of his that he's inviting to this. Now, um, in any of these open boxes, very soon you'll see something new coming out, so a little sneak peek for your viewers. So in one of those boxes right now, it's always just a person's face, they're talking. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to allow you to drop in a link to anything. So like you can drop in a link to a YouTube video. You can drop in a, a link to a form which will capture email addresses. You can put in a link to a slideshow and give a presentation. So you'll be able to drop a link to any place on the web and have it be right there in one of those boxes for you to then talk about that thing. You and yeah. you know three other people can be talking about a live stream. You can put a Periscope in there, right? You can put a live stream in there and have a layer of commentary around it. Um, so, so it'll become more and more flexible over time and that will open up, you know, step-by-step -step ways that people can make money and actually grab Spons pieces of that audience. Stuff. Exactly. Wow. That's really cool. Uh, BJ asks, how, how might Blab be used in the uh, near future of advanced IoT, IO, uh, brain-to-brain -brain communications? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> that's like 10 year plan. Yeah, that's a question for someone smarter than me <laughs> to, to answer, right? Well, you know, let's go, let's go there. Augmented reality is blown my mind and soon, i.e. within five years, we're going to have glasses on okay. and I think we're going to see videos of each other in the glasses and that's that's going to be fun but uh, you know that's, that's what you'll see first is Lab 2025 well, you know? <laughs> what, what, what you'll see first and, and developers Kickstarter projects and even companies have come to us which is they're going to announce their AR VR projects on here yeah. they're going to have the CEO in one, one side they're going to put a demo in the other side and uh, they will take questions from the community of people who are jazzed up about it, who are enthused about it. It's a way to, to not just do pre-recorded content, but to actually interact with the people who care the most. Yeah. What's it like being in San Francisco? I mean, I, I, I just walked here from uh, Westfield Mall where they're doing a lot of re retail store R&D right. and, and walked by Eventbrite and, uh, and Slack on the way here, and that's just in two blocks. Right. What, what's it like to be in this kind of community and, and why? What, what does that, what effect does that have on your startup? You know, it's, it's the reason I moved here. I was, in, I was in Australia doing a startup before this and I decided to move to the Mecca, right? I was like, let me come see what they're doing here. What's, what produces the different results? Is it smarter people? Is it more investment dollars? Like people have many theories. For me, it's a serendipity, right? I, I can walk out the street right now and I will literally bump into a founder or an investor. I will have a random conversation. It will feel very normal to have an idea that I'm going to change the world. You can go to a coffee shop here and it is, if somebody introduces themselves as, you know, working for JP Morgan, they almost do it embarrassed. They're embarrassed when they say it. They say, you know, yeah, right now I work in finance, but, uh, you know, I'm working on this side project. Yeah. Everybody wants to be working on something creative that's changing the world here. That's normal. In every other city I've ever lived in, that's the outlier. You're the crazy guy going off the beaten path. Here, doing something different is normal. 
And so being in San Francisco just allows you to be around a bunch of other delusional people like yourself who, you know, why not us? Why not now? Yeah. Answering those questions. Tell me technically, how, how is this coded? What's the infrastructure like? What, what are you running on? What, what's the tooling? So, so the most important thing to know is that we built it off of WebRTC. So a platform that, you know, a technology that Google has put a lot into and, and pioneered, but it's open source and many people have, have, uh, have been able to make an impact on that. That allows us to be very, very flexible in what we're doing. So we're running a real-time room of, you know, in this case, he's had 179 live viewers in there, but these are really big rooms. I mean, the other night we had someone who had 15,000 people come through in three hours. Yeah. And that's a giant conference. So this is a technological problem that uh, no company has really solved in real time. So if you go watch Twitch or you watch Periscope, there's a delay. And uh, we're the only ones who do it fully real time so that when I say something as a host, the audience gets it and responds and types their answer as fast as possible. We have to be real time because we're having a conversation. So me and you on air, we can't be delayed, right? We yeah. have to be perfectly insane. Even Facebook Live is usually about a, a few second delay and it can be up to 20 seconds depending on which data center you're hitting, right? Exactly. Because if you're in India, you might be getting an even further delay, but, yeah. but it's a few seconds and, and I can tell that. Um, to, 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 that's pretty impressive to have 15,000 people in one room all re real time. Yeah, it, it was over the course of three hours. So there yeah. wasn't 15 in okay. one second, but 15,000 over the that's course still, of that. That's, that's three hours. pretty cool. Uh, Doug asked a question I care a lot about. What, you know, what's the recording like and can I keep uh, interacting with people after the recording yeah. is done? So right here you see this little recording light. That means that Michael, the host, decided to put this on the air. Uh, if he doesn't hit that, it's going to say off the record, which means you can still blab, but it's not going to be that part is not recorded. You could toggle this on and off throughout the whole broadcast. You could say, "Hold on, I'm going to go get some water," or, "Hey, my guest is having a you know microphone issue. Just a sec, let me let me make sure the recording doesn't get messed up." So you can toggle it on and off, and then it lasts forever. So when this is over, you get an email with the MP4, the MP3, and an embed code to put this on your site as long tail content. Yeah. Um, so it's not, I mean, we're not Snapchat, quick, disappear, you know, self-destructing video. Um, people use us to create really interesting conversations and interviews and discussions that can live on if they choose. And after it's over, what typically happens when ESPN goes live, they do their show, and then when it's over, they go off the record and they just have banter with the crowd for the next 30 minutes. They call it After Dark, which is basically their kind of off the record version where they shoot the shit with their crowd. And Anne Greenberg shows a problem with this live stuff. She's, she's seeing that uh, Facebook Live is dropping every other word. It's not dropping here. And I, Facebook does a really good job of telling me whether I have a good connection to their servers. But uh, obviously, Anne doesn't have a good connection from exactly. the servers to her, and it's dropping for her. So try rebooting or come back and watch the recording. Uh, this recording will be up within a, a, a few seconds of, my, of the end of this thing. Uh, Heidi says, I wish the Blab Post live session recording uh, included the chat history. Lots of conversations take place on the side that I wish I could reference later, such as Twitter handles being shared and stuff like that. Yeah, that's to come. We, we, we agree with you. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. a matter of time. Yeah. Um, and do, 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 do. so other people say they're dropping as well. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. Other people say the feed's fine in here. The feed is fine. So, uh, people. Do, 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 do. What do you think? What do you What do you think are the most? Uh, give, be real. Be you know. Ask the Ask the most honest questions. I, I want to share questions. screen in this. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, how can I build a video game, a VR uh, channel. Uh, I'm I'm thinking about that full time where I want to have people see what I'm actually experiencing mm -hmm. in VR and have it uh, displayed here on Blab yeah. and then have other people chatting with me about it, right. taunting me, you know, like, <laughs> hey, I, and I, I, this comes out of a YouTube video I saw um, uh, from a uh, group of gamers, there were three gamers, one was wearing a headset and the other two were taunting him yeah. and saying, pick up the knife, throw it at the robot, you know, stuff like that, there's, right? There's, there's channels the, that some, one guy's building a Minecraft world and the other three people are just kind of like either talking a little bit of trash or kind of advising and helping being like hey you should do this or hey watch out for this I've seen people play Counter-Strike and share their own screen using kind of third-party software and you see all four people from their point of view on the map playing Counter-Strike with each other so it's pretty interesting things like you're saying with screen share that's something that's on the roadmap when I said we're right you're gonna be able to drop in any link here yeah. so I could either call in and Steven this is how you're gonna monetize you're gonna drop in links to ads or to sponsor content or uh, to other things that you can uh, sell, right? So, so you're going to be able to put in, you know, either a YouTube stream or, in this case, you might just put in, uh, you might just write the word screen share in there, and it's going to start screen sharing right away. And that's where you'll be able to be talking about and showing really cool stuff 
but still having a conversation around it. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you can, can you control the audio with the other guests, not just mute the level? Not, not yet. As a host, you can't just mute somebody else. <laughs> yeah. But we have had some requests for that, so. Yeah. Uh, That's probably we're, we're not as religious about it as like the dislike button of Facebook or something like that. We think, you know, there may be some merits to letting the host just pause everybody or mute everybody um, <laughs> on their whim. Yeah. How's Blab on mobile or tablet? It's equally as good, right? Yeah, I'll show you. Uh, and you just shipped an update today. I noticed I got an update on my iPhone. Yeah, we, we are updating it all the time, almost to our, our user's annoyance. So I'm just loading wow. the stream and here. Right, How many employees do you have here? So there's 14 of us full time. Um, so How many of us are There are nine engineers. Nine engineers. Yeah. That's a pretty good ratio. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's the mobile app. That's the mobile app. Uh, you, you can call in straight from here. You can that's listen to it. You can just minimize it and listen to it like a podcast and just leave it in your pocket. So um, it's pretty flexible from there. Very cool. Um, anything else that we should uh, cover? We covered investment. We covered a little bit of your team, where this thing came from. We covered how to monetize. Uh, a lot of fun. What are you guys going to do at South by? I'm, I, I'm sure you're thinking about what to do at South so, by. So Brittany will be at South by Southwest. Brittany over there, but, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, the rest yeah. of our team, we're going up to Michael's cabin, doing a hackathon week for that week. We call it North by Northwest, yeah. where we go get shit done while everybody else is at South by. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, does it embed a player on Facebook? It doesn't really embed a player, does it? It, it has a link out to Not yet. So this, this share, share 30 seconds, this you can do to Facebook. See, I got Facebook selected here. Yeah. This would share a little clip there um, to Facebook, which is not the live stream. It's like the most hilarious, most insightful 30 seconds. What just happened? Yeah. It's actually a really good way to draw people in from your feeds because they're just browsing and they'll watch a 30 second nugget. Um, and then in the future, we will figure out how we're going to get the actual live stream piped to Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Doug's asking, uh, can, can you build a SoundCloud style uh, timeline commenting feature where you could go forward and back in a, a recorded video and see when the comments actually came in? We actually have a prototype of that. So uh, wow. it's very, very difficult to do. <laughs> it kind of, uh, the only reason we didn't push it out because it messes up about a third of the recording. So we said, that's probably not too good. We should get that right before we push that out. But yeah, uh, yeah we think that the chat should basically play back with the recording. If you're going to watch a replay, you want to watch the full experience. And then how, how do you help people discover cool new blabs? Uh, is there a store where I can you know, type business blabs or so, sports blabs. So there are categories, there are tags that you can use to filter and say like, show me all what's in sports right now. Um, it's not great, discovery is not great if I'm being honest with you. I think it's the area where we need to spend the most time. At first it was like, how do we get anyone here? And now that number is just going up. So okay, now we got users and growth and all that stuff. Now the problem is, when you visit, we should show you something that you're really, really going to like. It means we got to have it be interest-based and really take on discovery as a challenge. Yeah. So. How many blabs are there so far? Uh, they, they were last week, I don't know, 8,000 blabs or <laughs> something like that. So we, we're getting close to where we're doing more, more blabs on a weekly basis than, than podcast updates uh, or podcast episodes going to iTunes. So we're, we're on their tail. Greg, Greg is asking, what about 360 video? That's hard to do because there's no cameras that do live streaming 360 yet. Yeah. But they're coming. They're coming. You know, probably next year. Yeah, we, we don't think much about that. Honestly, uh, most people who broadcast are actually broadcasting from their laptop and they're in their room and there's nothing exciting going on around them. They're having a conversation. They just, you know, watch something go down and have an opinion they want to share or they're bored at night and they want to jump, jump on and, and connect with a bunch of people. So uh, it's not really about like HD. It's not really about amazing video capture. Um, we are really just a, a conversation platform. We just want to get that part right. When the, when the show's over, what kind of stats do you show the, the uh, producer of the show? It, it's pretty, the pretty basic stuff right now. We'll show you how many people you had. We'll show you who was there. And you yeah. can connect with them on Twitter with one click. Um, we, you'll see all the different people who shared your broadcast. So you can get a sense for who are the most loyal people. Um, and that's about it right now. And then in the future, we're going to show you a little bit of your drop-off curve. We'll show you, you know, things are great. And then 30 minutes in, you started to lose some viewers and, and maybe that's something to think about. Yeah. Facebook but, shows that a little bit. We started out with, I think, 260. The problem is a lot of people come in, you know, midstream, <laughs> midstream. And so, you know, some people watch for 10 minutes, go away, right. and then new people come in and you, you can't really have an idea of what, what keeps them around. I'd, I'd love to watch, 
you know, did I uh, keep a viewer for longer than their average viewing time, for instance? Mm -hmm. Because that tells me I'm being much more interesting than average, right. particularly for that viewer. Right. And uh, that, that would be much more interesting than, um, you know, just showing uh, that I kept 200 people around. Right. right. I mean, a lot of people get this wrong, right? They just look at views. It's like, I want to get as many views as I can. They think about video, they think about YouTube, they think about views, and now that's the metric they want. Our metric is watch time. So I actually care about if somebody spent 10 minutes watching you, that's 10 minutes of attention you had focused on you. Yeah. That's amazing. That's a lot better than a view on a Vine clip, right? So how do you actually, how do we get people to start thinking about this in terms of uh, attention that they're, that they're capturing people for? So um, over yeah. time, people will stop kind of using old metrics that they, you know, they're just used to and start thinking about things that are actually relevant to what they're doing, which is the engagement, the conversation, the attention. Greg has an interesting question. Can you Chromecast it or Apple, Apple Play it to a big screen? Yeah, absolutely. I'm on my laptop right now. If I just, it's in a Chrome browser. If I, if I wanted to throw it up on this screen, I could with Chromecast. Very cool. And Jennifer says, what's the feature that you think is the greatest value for content creators that doesn't exist on any other platform? It's the multi yeah, the part boxes. <laughs> it's the four boxes, yeah. right? Which, you know, Google Hangouts has, but you do it really well and yeah. make it so easy to join. It's the little things, right? You said, you know, what's, how do you figure out the social nuances? On Google Hangouts, you have one person big, like a presenter, and then anytime someone else talks, laughs, coughs, they switch videos all of a sudden, you get this spastic effect. On ours, we show both people because I want to see her talking and him smiling. That's the actual, uh, that's me being a fly on the wall for their conversation. I can see the dynamics of it. It's not about uh, Google doing something really cool, which was voice recognition, audio recognition, and quickly switching things. That was cool to an engineer, but it's actually destructive to a conversation, D in D my opinion. Doug asks a deeper question. Uh, how, do you, how do you get people to your, uh, to your blog? What's the best? What are some tips for Blab creators? You yeah. know, how do you make it interesting? And and that's a, a far deeper question, and we could probably spend you know an hour at South by Southwest talking about how do you get a promotion for your yeah. for your Blab and get people on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn to see it, right? Yeah, I mean the the simple answer is you go where they are. So the reason we harp so much on the embed is because we like going where communities already are. So if you have a blog, you have a website or what your co-host does, or you're making content relevant to a certain community. So like, we're embedded on Product Hunt, which means we get all their traffic, right? When people come for their Product Hunt live, uh, our, our community grows. And so the people who do the best are the ones who already have a following, the people who have a community. Yeah. But the thing is, it won't stop there. That's just who has the easiest. When ESPN brings in all these sports fans, they make it that much easier for me to make a good sports show, because they brought in a bunch of people who are interested in the type of content I create. And now Blab will bridge that. We'll pool together all these audiences and say, cool, now that makes it available for anyone. But at the early days, it's the people who have a mailing list, people who have big websites that do the best because they just embed it right where they already are. They yeah. just link them to it. Yeah. Um, I think that's good enough for now. Okay. Uh, we can ha go on endlessly, and that sounds like we should have a Blab on this. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> hey, it's at Blab is our Twitter handle, and then Blab.im is the website. Check it out. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, my, my direct messages are open. We're probably, the, I guarantee you, we're the most responsive team that's building any social product that's out there. So um, if, you, if you're looking to engage with people, you know, the average, the average Blab community member knows probably nine of my team members <laughs> they, by name and face uh, because they see us all the time in Blabs. Uh, so you'll see us around. Very cool. And uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, I love doing these little live videos with founders and we're gonna be doing a lot more. Uh, Although not next week, because next week I'm going to South Africa and I'm only going to be on Snapchat, Snapchat. <laughs> which will be very strange. <laughs> Throw out your Snapchat handle so everyone knows. You know, Scobalizer everywhere. Perfect. <laughs> Scobalizer.